a dissolution of that is done using some kind of a linear solver. Linear solver. How can you solve a linear system? I'm not going through that, I'm just doing some comments on multigrid. How can you solve a, a linear system? Jacobi, gauss seidel successive over relaxation, gradient conjugate, B gradient conjugate, the LU decomposition, and so on. They are all iterative methods. And you solve your, your system iteratively, not using the zeros of the equation. When you use the zeros of the equation, it means you are inverting the matrix in order to have an exact solution of the linear system. But then, uh, I'm, gonna throw, I'm going through this multigrid because it's important. Because it's a, it's, a, it's a way to accelerate the convergence of iterative methods. And then we are going to talk about, there is one which is, uh, uh, it's, it's, it, it's used uh, for uh, some softwares, commercial softwares, which tremendously accelerates the, the, the solution. Let me just to point out, a multigrid technique is not a method to solve a linear system. The multigrid technique always comes together with a method for solving a linear system. Say, multigrid can come with Gauss-Seidel, multigrid can come with a successive of relaxation, multigrid can come together with some kind of a, a, a incomplete LU decomposition. Uh, it's not a method by itself. It accelerates some iterative method that they use. And then the concept of multigrid. What is the concept of multigrid? The concept of multigrid is because uh, iterative methods, they are able to resolve or they are able to, to eliminate it from your solution the errors that are compatible or similar to the wavelength Oh, the, the wavelength of the error is similar to the size of the grid. Let's say the iterative methods are able to reduce only errors with wavelength of the order of the grid size. That's just what I finished to, to say. You know, and then if you, are, if you have an error of this type, this grid will be able to eliminate that. Depending on the wavelength and the, of course the frequency of your error, you need one type of grid, which is written in red here. If I have a, let's say, low frequency, large wavelength of my error, that I want to eliminate from my solution, I need to use a grid which is compatible which is the, the order equivalent to the size of the wavelength of the error. It doesn't help uh, to have a, a wave, uh, wave uh, an error. The, this chalk, the green, the white chalk here is, is, is not performing well. If I have an error which is like this one, it doesn't help uh, to put a grid like that here. It doesn't help because the, the, the neighbor points, it doesn't see too much difference on the error. You have a, a strong, uh, large wavelength, doesn't help. This, 
let me go in this picture and then I come back to that. Let's say, let's say you have a, this equation to be solved. This is the best way to show the importance, the, uh, the, to have the same, the, the size of the grid, the same order of the error. If you, have, if you want to solve this equation, du dx, dx2, so let's say this is the heat conduction equation without source term, 1D, with u equal to 0 and in, in, in x equal to 0 and uh, in x equal to 1. So the, the solution is here. The solution is u equal to 0. The exact solution, of course. It's a, li it's a linear solution, zero and zero, the solution is zero. And now imagine that I start the solution, I don't know the solution, it's a very complex problem, I don't know, I will solve numerically. So I do my numerics, I have my approximate equation, and I, I, I need to start the solution, because in an iterative method I'm gonna use, I will start the solution with some estimate. And now let's imagine that I'm going to start the estimation. My initial solution, which I will progress with this initial solution, which is in fact an estimated solution. Initial solution we say when is real transient. Now I'm just iterating my, my, my linear system in order to get this, the solution which is equal to, to zero. If I start with that, and I keep solving with an iterative solver, this is what happens. This is, it seems to me, this is gauss idel here. Uh, what happens? The first iteration, I drop my solution to here. The second goes to the blue. The third one goes here and after 10 iterations is the yellow. And six volumes, six volumes. Oh, what means? I'm almost there because I have only six volumes in my domain and my error is this one. What kind of error is this one? Is a senoidal behavior here minus some value that you sum and, and, and subtract from the, the solution. So this is the initial solution, the estimate, estimative, the, the first estimate, and then they are iterating. So it's working reasonably because the domain has an error with large wavelength and my grid is is coarse grid which means it's large control volumes if i do if i if i now save uh, solve this problem with uh, 30 control volumes same problem everything is the same my initial condition is my senoidal value summing and over this in near every grid putting uh, minus and plus. So now the beginning is this uh, is this curve here, which is the um, uh, close to the red, so I forgot the name. Uh, purple, this purple curve, this purple curve. And then see, in the first iteration is, is the green. And second iteration is already blue. And after 10 iterations, we are up here. And this is what I want to, to, to reach. So 
this magnitude is the error in my solution compared with my exact solution. So now you can iterate as much as you want. You don't. You you you, you are not. This method are no longer able to reduce the error. It will keep just it just drop from some value to a near one. All the errors, which was the size of the uh, the grid, they were eliminated. See, so it's the yellow curve doesn't show any bumps. It's all all eliminated. Why? Because the error introduced has the same size of the grid, the same order. The le the length of the the wavelength of the error is the same size of the grid. Then it doesn't. We call it, this method stalls, you know, it stops to work. So you, you just, it's just a waste of computer time if you keep going, going on. If you, let's say, increase that for 60 volumes, and again, you put an error with the wavelength Similar with same order of the grid size. In ten iterations, the L is there. It didn't change almost. So it's it's clear by those three pictures that iterative methods they are only able to reduce the errors in your solution when the errors have the wavelength compatible or have the same order of the the size, the, the, the grid size. Uh, then this brings us to think that when you are solving a very complex problem, you have uh, different wavelengths, different errors in your solution. If you, you are solving a complex 3D problem, the error in your solution will not be just one frequency. In some region of the flow, you must have some errors with high frequency. In other region of the flow, lower frequency, which means larger wavelength, high frequency, smaller wavelength. What this uh, convey us to think? We need different grids for different errors. And then, but how to do that is to solve you don't know the errors that you have when you are solving the problem. The, you, the error can be decomposed in a, in a series with different wavelengths, but you don't know the error because you are trying to find one solution which you, you don't know which solution is, and you start with one estimative, and then you begin the problem with an error already. <coughs> but you don't know which one. Uh, you know, you don't know how to measure the error. So the only uh, way to do that is to solve the same problems, to solve the same linear system with different grids. If you solve with a grid size like that, you you eliminate the errors which are, and if you solve with a smaller grid, you eliminate the errors which are the same order of magnitude of the grid that you are. So. If you solve your linear system in several grids, you are reducing the error, uh, all the, the spectrum of errors that you have in, in your solution. So this is the, the rationale behind the, 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 the multi-grid method. Uh, is to begin with one grid, solve on that grid, and then using another coarse grid, solving on that coarse grid, and another, and another, and another, in order to eliminate and reduce all the errors which are in your solution. So that's what you, you have to do. You have to start 
and how the, 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 system, the, uh, the, the, the algorithm really wor uh, works. Uh, when you are solving a, a problem, you choose one grid for the solution of your problem. This grid, it, it is fine enough that you think will be a good solution for your physics. Then you, you have a defined grid that in, in which grid you want the solution. Then you pick it up some iterative method, you create all your coefficients for this fine grid. Keep in mind, this initial grid is the grid in which you want to solve your problem. You already defined that this grid is fine enough for your solution, for your physics. And then you pick up some iterative methods. You have the, your matrix, let's say one million unknowns. Then you solve with your iterative solve. And then these a million unknowns, of course, have some kind of grid size for the, your domain with a million nodes. And then you, you, you keep iterating with your iterative solver. Then you see that your, your iterative solver uh, is no longer working. And then what you, what you do? Then you say, okay, I'm going to increase my grid. Say, to, to make it more coarse. Because the errors of the wavelengths compatible with the first grid, they were eliminated. So now, I picked up my, my fine grid and I, I will coarse it. So inst instead of one million control volumes now, let's say I'm going to divide it, I will uh, 250,000, so I'm going to cut it, divide by four. I reduce it to, to my own nose to 2,050 uh, uh, no, uh, nodes. So I, I went from one million and I cut in, a, in, in four. So I have a coarse mesh now. Now I'm going to solve this problem in the coarse mesh. When I'm going to solve this problem in the coarse mesh, my matrix has no longer one million unknowns. My matrix has 250,000 uh, unknowns. And now I solve this matrix with 250,000 and I, ha I, I got a solution. What did happen? I reduced the errors for this other grid. What I do now? Cut it more. Keep it going. So now I'm gonna do uh, uh, cutting four again. So I'll be six thousand, uh, sixty thousand, uh, sixty thousand uh, unknowns. I have to solve this new linear system now with uh, sixty thousand, sixty-two thousand five hundred nodes. I will. What I, what I have done now, I resolve the errors for another grid size. And I keep going until the grid is so coarse that I could, I could find an exact solution, a matrix inversion. And then I have to come back. Let's inject in the values that I calculate until to reach uh, my original grid in which I want to solve the problem. So in this procedure lies the different algorithms, different multi-grid methods. Because let me just come back to the first grid. I have one million grids, I have solved one million values for my nodes. How do you construct the other matrix, which is now has only 2,500? How do you construct this new matrix? This the smaller matrix, we have two, two, um, 200,000 in, uh, in, in 50 uh, uh, control volumes. How do you construct that matrix? How do you do that? I will come back to 
a little bit less number of nodes. But I saw it here. I solve it here and here and there and there and there and there. This is my original grid. It is refined enough for me. It's where I want to solve my problem. I have my linear system. I have my linear system to solve, I solve it, and then I have one solution. But I, I kept solving my iterative solver, it, it stalls, and then I said, okay, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna do uh, another, I'm, I'm gonna course the grid. It's better I put another line here. I'm gonna now this is my grid. Now the, the pink now is my grid. Now I before I was f four times four I had 16 unknowns. I saw that for the 16 unknowns. Now this new system will have only four unknowns. And that's my question. I'm back to my question. How do I construct my linear system which give me now the phi For the four points, how do you how do you do that? So it's a new grid that you now you integrate again your equations in the smaller grid. So in how to do that is what differs uh, the methods and multi, uh, in, in the different multigrid methods. The, there is a question, how do I agglomerate the control volumes? Geometrically, just look into the geometry and say, I'm going to do that and that and that. Or algebraically, thinking the coefficients. And now how, how I will use this point that was already solved here, uh, to to feed this new solution, which has now only four uh, control volumes. What if, uh, I'm going to just talk about it, which is the additive correction multigrid. It is a method which uh, creates this new matrix just based on the coefficients of the previous matrix. So you, you just find the coefficients for your original grid, let's say in our previous problem, one million uh, unknowns, all the coefficients, and then when I'm gonna find the, the coefficients for my reduced system, which I cut in, a, in four, just play with the coefficients of the previous. So there is no need to integrate new other equations or, or to do some in, injecting values here in order to solve the new. So it's a kind of method which in every level of the matrix that you are using, you construct the new linear system, those coefficients for this little problem, you have four phi, just four. There, the 16. This matrix, 
It's a four by four. It, 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 I have four lines, four columns. That one is 16 by 16. So why do I create this matrix in the additive correction multigrid method? You, 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 you create this matrix using the coefficients of this matrix. It, this is your problem uh, where you are solving. So there is no need for new coefficients. You, we will have new coefficients, but calculate it as a function of uh, those ones. So it's, it's very easy. And it's appropriate for uh, unstructured grids. Uh, and then the agglomeration is not just geometric like that. Because the agglomeration has to be as a function of the coefficients. That is the light that I jump, I'm going to back there. So there are the algebraic multigrid methods and the geometric multigrid methods. The geometric multigrid method, they just look to the to the matrix and do the division geometrically. And the algebraic multigrid methods, they don't look to the, to the grid. They look to the coefficients such that that you are going to have in the second level the new matrix preserves conservation principles. So there is a conservation also obeyed on those elements in not just the average of the values, there's conservation respected. And also, uh, the, the calculation is based in, in the previous coefficients. So, and the agglomeration, that's the, the difficult part of the method. The agglomeration, you get, you put together contour volumes such that your resulting matrix is isotropic in terms of coefficients, which means it's a well-balanced matrix with the coefficients. Because some, well, the algebraic method doesn't take into account the physics. And the, uh, sorry, the geometric agglomeration doesn't take into account the physics. And the algebraic multigrid method, they agglomerate the control volumes based on the coefficients of the matrix and trying to, to, to do what? Trying to have a, the new level of solution with a matrix where the coefficients are well balanced uh, uh, in, the, in, the matrix, in the matrix. Now it's, it's, it's working uh, very well, the, the, this, uh, this method. Uh, and I will be back here just uh, talking about briefly that the coefficients can be very different in uh, in the in a physical problem. If you get the, the Laplace equation, you you can do a finite difference here. You will get in a grid like that where dx is much bigger than the y. You will, you will have a uh, linear system like this one. The, the phi at point P relate to the phi at point E and W, and the coefficient is 1, 1, and the coefficient here is dx divided by dy as a square. So it's a very large coefficient north and south. Why? Because you have large dx, small dy, in this simple equation. But you may have some, uh, and then when everything is diffusive, the nice thing will be to have all square, because the coefficients will be a, a square grid. But here, if you have a, a, a large dx, your coefficients will be anisotropic. And it's a tropic in terms of uh, mat mathematics, you know, of course, not physics. The, uh, the, the coefficients in, in this direction, they are much larger than in this direction. So if you are using an iterative method, it doesn't work well if you go in this direction. Because they are weaker coefficients. It will be to, to, to go working 
in the direction of the large coefficient. So when you are solving your problem, your big problem, which you don't want to solve a linear, direct linear system because there are too much zeros, then you go for iterative methods. If your coefficients are not isotropic, iterative method doesn't work well also because of the anisotropy of the coefficients. coefficients. So it's not enough to, in the multigrid, it's not enough to agglomerate based on, ge on geometry because the physics may be strongly uh, influence the coefficients. And that's why, that's what happens in, the convec in a convection flow. Flat plate, boundary layer. In order to capture the profile normal to the wall, you need a very fine grid resolution here. But here, you can have large grids here. And say, but that's not good. The, the coefficient will be isotropic. Why? Because in this direction, you have a strong velocity. And the coefficient will be large in this direction because of this large velocity. And here you don't have large velocities. So it may happen. It may happen that with a very coarse grid in the x direction, in a fine grid in the y direction, the, the resulting coefficients are isotropic. isotropic. Why? Because in this direction you have the physics which increases the coefficient. In this direction you, you have mainly diffusion in this part. But if you're going to say I'm going to solve a multigrid geometrically, what is your main, your tentative to do like that? Which is not right. Because for this large grid, in this small one here, it's already isotropic, the coefficients, because of the convection. So to cut in little squares works only for diffusion, because then you don't have, a, 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 let's say, another co a convection, a direction which influences your, your coefficient. So uh, in a, a divective problem, like in boundary layer, you may have uh, some grid which is a large del uh, delta x, the x, and, and a small dy. Because the velocity enters in the coefficient and may result in isotropic coefficient. And the, what's the, 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 the main idea when you see a grid without this, you no, know, the large dx the, the with the small dy? Your, your, your tentative is to do a grid like that if, it's, if, you, if you forget the physics and you just see geometry. But that will not help because uh, the, the, the previous grid was already good because of the vacuum uh, influences the coefficient. So, the agglomeration has to be based on the coefficients. Uh, we'll, we will uh, uh, continue this, uh, this part of the multigrid method in our uh, next, uh, next uh, lecture. But just let's keep in mind that agglomeration has to be in terms of the coefficient in order to obtain your matrix in the other level of the grid uh, with a balanced coefficients, isotropic coefficients. And then th th that's the key question. See you on Wednesday. Thank you for today. Have a nice weekend.